Hello and welcome to the NFL Week 15 Betting Picks video. I'm your host for Lamps.com, Matthew Amato, here with another great slate of Sunday NFL betting picks. But before we jump into my favorite ones on the week, we're going to review my Week 14 betting report card, and we're going to jump into that right now. So week 14 was another profitable week coming off of 4-0. Week 13, we go 3-1 week 14. Let's talk about the game Seattle-Houston. A little nervous in the first half with this one, but Seattle really came through. The offense started playing a lot better. And shout out to Rashad Penny, who had a fantastic game against an OK Houston run defense. They end up taking this 33-13, cover the spread with ease, and uh, also a fantastic game from Tyler Lockett. Had some incredible catches and the game was never really in doubt once Seattle got going in that second half. My only loss on the week was Vegas. I was really confident in them, I guess, bouncing back and playing well against a bad Kansas City defense. But starting right off the bat with that turnover from Josh Jacobs, I knew it was a bad pick um, when Kansas City recovered it and scored a touchdown. Still don't think KC's defense is all that. I mean, they rank bottom third in DVOA in every defensive category. If you watch them with their eyeballs, they're not doing anything special, but Vegas has just fallen apart, and a lot of it had to do with the turnovers in this game. But where I went wrong, at least in my process, um, was Kansas City's offense. I thought Vegas could get some pressure on Mahomes. They had no shot in this game. Mahomes controlled it for the its entirety, and uh, they're lucky it wasn't more than 48 points, to be honest. So big loss there, but they all count the same. 49ers beat Cincinnati 26-13 in overtime. This one, I feel like my process was right, but Kyle Shanahan, as he often does, had weird play calling in the second half where he kind of tried to force a run instead of continuing to pass all over Cincinnati. I think the 49ers could have took this in regulation by two touchdowns, but they took their foot off the pedal. They had to win in OT, which they did. They drove down the field, won with ease after Cincinnati kicked that field goal, but it wasn't really necessary. I feel like Kyle Shanahan should have Chosen different play calls for that second half, but it is what it is. We get the win. Then Tampa Bay Buffalo got pretty lucky here. So originally, I really liked this line at 3.0, uh, Tampa Bay minus three, but it got bumped up to three and a half mid video if you watched last week. And uh, I stuck with it, and Tampa Bay does come out, but it shows you why I wanted Tampa Bay at minus three. Because if you go into OT and Tampa Bay does just kick a field goal instead of the Brashad Perryman touchdown, you still get at least a push. Um, if Tampa Bay kicks the field goal, they win the game by three. I would have lost this bet. But luckily, Tampa Bay once again uh, scoring a late touchdown that may have not have been necessary and coming through with the cover. So three and one brings our overall record to 34 and 21 plus 10 units on the season without my teaser and plus 12 and a half if you include the teaser we did in week 13. And speaking of teasers, I will have one in the end of this video as I'm feeling pretty confident with my picks this week 15 um, when you add on that six point tease. All right, so for my first pick, I like the Buffalo Bills minus 11 at home against the Panthers. Now, this one went really back and forth on it, but I did settle on going with the Bills minus 11. And the reason for this is I don't believe the Panthers can score many points. I do think the one place you can attack the Bills is on the ground. And uh, Chubba Hubbard should have a pretty decent game, whether it's Cam Newton or whoever at quarterback. I do think the Panthers can at least get the ground game going decently efficient. But when it comes to closing out drives, scoring touchdowns, or keeping drives alive on a long third down, I don't see it happening. I really don't see it happening against this good Bills secondary, even without Tredavious White. And I don't see it happening with the absolute pathetic QB play that is coming out of Carolina. I also think the firing of Joe Brady really plays a factor into me picking Buffalo minus 11, where with Joe Brady, I can see him scheming up enough points in garbage time to cover. But without Joe Brady, I don't think they have a chance. I think that was a really weird call to fire him unless he's the entire reason why they traded for Sam Darnold. Because if he wasn't, there's no reason why he should be out. But <laughs> politics aside there, uh, I do think Josh Allen played fantastic in that second, second half against Tampa Bay, and I foresee him playing just as well at home against Carolina in this one. I actually do think the home advantage will be big. You know, Buffalo is a place where I feel there is pretty decent home field advantage, and that is why I'm comfortable taking them at over two scores um, for the spread. So minus 11, Buffalo Bills at home. I like them to take Carolina um, and really just take care of business. I don't think Carolina scores more than 10, 14 points in this game. I think Buffalo puts up 28 with ease. So... I'm predicting at least a 14-point game, and uh, that's more than enough to cover the 11-point spread. 
So my next pick is Miami minus 10 against the Jets at home. And this one is another one not as confident as I will be with my next two picks. I think this and Buffalo are about on the same confidence level. Um, I do think the Jets with Zach Wilson can put up some points, but with the injuries, with the COVID news, um, I just don't think the Jets have enough to cover. And I do think, as I've been saying for weeks, Miami turned a corner on defense. They are going to play well. They are going to get turnovers from Zach Wilson in this game. The offensive line is really the biggest issue for the New York offense. And Miami will exploit that. Jalen Phillips has played fantastically well. I foresee a, a couple sacks, maybe a strip sack, maybe a sack causing or um, a pressure causing an interception. I think that disturbance on defense will lead to easy points on offense for Miami, who I do think also has an advantage. I think Tua, Jalen Waddle, and that wide receiving core, um, they're going to put up plenty of points on the Jets' uh, defense. There's little to like about the Jets' defense right now. Uh, Robert Sala's not having a great year. Tua's been playing fantastic as of late. They've been very efficient. Really, the only place I would love to see an upgrade for Miami is at the running back position, but I don't think it's going to make a big difference in this game. I do think Miami takes this by multiple scores. I would be a little bit more confident if Michael Carter wasn't back. I really do think he is a difference maker for this offense. He is a great running back and a great receiving running back, which bodes well for game points and garbage time and kind of backdoor covering. But at minus 10, I am still confident with Miami getting the cover in this game. I think, once again, similar to Buffalo, they win this by two touchdowns, um, if not more. Um, it's very likely we see a very similar game to the Saints-Jets game that was just played this past week. The final score is 33-9. to The Saints kind of controlled the Jets' offense the entire game and scored with short fields. Kamara did a lot in that game, and I think it's going to be a little bit of the opposite where Tua does a lot in this one to put up points for Miami. So Miami, who I think is just a completely different team all of a sudden, and honestly, maybe not one of my favorites in the AFC, but I do think they, they will get a playoff win this year. Um, it's just a massive mismatch against the Jets, especially at home, taking them minus 10. And uh, I'm believing in Tua and believing in this new defense that Miami has showcased the past few weeks. So Washington football team plus six. Um, this line, you currently cannot place a bet on. And I believe this has to do with the COVID news coming out. I mean, there's COVID news coming across the board everywhere. Every NFL team is dealing with it. Um, we don't know if Jalen Hurts is going to be playing in this game. I think that's also another big factor. But whether it's Jalen Hurts or Gardner Minshew, I think Washington football team covers a six-point spread. If I am betting this game and not just doing my betting picks video where we just take the spread on DraftKings on Wednesday, I would buy this up to plus seven points at minus 130 so you get that touchdown coverage from Washington. That would have saved you in the Dallas game this uh, previous weekend. The line jumped up to plus six right before game time. If you would have bought up to plus seven, you would have got yourself a push. Um, Washington football team, their defense played well, actually, against Dallas. They played really, really well. Unfortunately, turnovers by Heineke and Antonio Gibson really is what caused Washington to lose that game, and um, it didn't give them a chance to push it to overtime. So I think if Washington plays as well in this one and they still have a chance at a playoff spot, um, I, I think they have a possibility of winning the game outright. I'm not a huge believer in this Philadelphia Eagles team. I actually like this game more if Jalen Hurts plays at least on the Washington side, the plus six side, because I do think Washington can kind of control Jalen Hurts, control that ground game of the Eagles that has been so deadly and force Jalen to use his arm, which he just can't do. Um, we've seen that time and time again. He's shown a couple flashes, but I don't think he will in this game. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I like this line more, honestly, if Jalen Hurts plays, but with Gardner Minshew in there, I'd still think... Washington football team covers. I think they have a really good chance of winning this one. Of course, if Ty Taylor Heineke ends up re-injuring himself or he ends up with COVID, changes everything. So you guys will have to be pay paying close attention to injury and COVID news this week because it has been rampant. Um, but as it stands right now on Wednesday and what I'm projecting um, from today to Sunday, I think Washington covers. Um, and I think their offense does just enough on this somewhat tough Eagles defense. I think Heineke has a better game. I think Antonio Gibson has a better game. And I think that Washington defense is really what's going to cause this uh, this plus six to be a value in this one. My final pick on the day is my most confident one. It's the Packers minus five at the Baltimore Ravens. Aaron Rodgers had himself a game against the Chicago defense, which is not that great, but I honestly think it's kind of on par with where Baltimore is right now. Baltimore is 
riddled with COVID and injuries, just absolutely decimated on the defensive side of the ball. And I would say their defense right now is on par with the kind of poor performance from the Chicago defense. Two defenses that probably should be playing a lot better, but due to injuries and just poor performance, aren't doing that well. So I think Aaron Rodgers has the capacity to score 35, maybe even 40 points in this game. And this is why I'm so confident. I do not foresee Baltimore coming close to that. Um, there's some injuries. There's some rumors about Lamar being hurt or out with being sick again. I mean, how many times has he gone COVID? I'm not worried about that. All, all that. I'm not going to take that into consideration. I think even with Lamar Jackson there, the Packers take this by multiple touchdowns. I don't think this game ends up being close. Um, and the five point spread does not scare me one bit. I think they take this by more than the touchdown. If you got down, if it's down to minus four before game time, maybe you can buy down to minus three just to assure yourself. But I don't even think it's needed in this case. I think the Packers dominate this game, and it's really because Baltimore is going to have zero answers for this Packers offense. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon probably have a bounce back game. Aaron Rodgers is going to play fantastically with Devonte Adams, MVS, Alan Lazard. He doesn't even need elite wide receivers. Um, but with Devontae Adams there, obviously he's going to utilize them. And I think Adams has a massive game against Baltimore. I just want to throw that in there. Um, maybe you can get some good Devontae Adams player props. Then we flip it to the other side of the ball. I think Lamar does okay in this one. I think the Packers can scheme enough for Lamar where he's not putting up 35 points on their defense. As long as they limit the Ravens to under 28 or at 20 in this game. I like this spread. That's how confident I am in the Packers offense right now. So minus five, not scared about it. One bit Aaron Rodgers has been playing really well. Um, and I think he continues that against a very banged up and poor performing Baltimore defense. And I really think the Packers take this one with ease. and ends up not being that close. So to wrap things up, let's go over my picks. And I do want to say Washington football team in the middle of this video just got bumped up from plus six to plus seven. Um, I don't know because I have not read any news that Taylor Heineke is out. As long as this has nothing to do with the quarterback situation, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a pass here and let them and take the plus seven. Um, I made sure I gave myself the minus three and a half from Tampa Bay last week. I'm going to give myself a little bit of break here and take Washington football team plus seven. So now you don't even have to buy the points. You're getting it at minus 110. So Buffalo Bills minus 11 at home against the Panthers. I think they take care of business. Miami at home against the Jets. Same thing. I think both these teams win by two plus touchdowns. Washington football team plus seven. I think the defense is just too good to be given that many points against Philadelphia, especially if Jalen Hurts is the quarterback. And then Packers minus five. I think they dominate the Ravens, especially on the offensive side of the ball. This parlay is plus 1228, but we are going to look at that six point teaser, which is plus 260. So similar to last time that I did this, I'm going to throw in a teaser as an extra bet at the end. So you get the Bills minus five, Miami minus four, Washington plus 13, which is huge, and then Packers plus one. So I really like this teaser because Buffalo, Miami, all of a sudden only have to win by one touchdown, which I think they are both more than capable of. I think that's a really great bet. I love Washington plus 13 points. Um, I mean, it's just a great value. Like I said, I don't even think they're going to lose by a touchdown. I do not think they're going to lose by two scores in this one. And then, and then the Packers just have to win the game, which I'm all over the Packers. I'd probably take them at minus 10 with an alternate total, but I'm definitely going to take them at plus one with this teaser. So at plus 260, I believe this is a little bit of a value. I'll include this on my betting report card for next week, and it's going to wrap it up for my picks this week. So thank you guys for watching. If you have not, you can click subscribe. It really helps us out. You can always click the bell. Also click the bell to get notified when our videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike and comment down below your favorite bets for week 15. And I'll see you for week 16 very soon.